But no, congrats on the win, buddy. Thank you, thank you very much. Now, immediately after uh, the fight, did it play out how you thought it would? I mean, knowing, knowing the tough opponent that you were gonna have, but did, how, how closely did it play out to what you maybe thought in your head that, you would, that it would happen out there? Game plan was defense, 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 <laughs> and uh, I threw it out the window, but I had fun, so. Uh, it wasn't like what I thought it was going to be. My wife just called me and yelled at me, and she said that's, that was not the game plan. Um, but I enjoyed it. And then immediately after the fight, I was really emotional, you know. I said something that was a little bit off. I said I feel disrespected by the matchmaking. It's actually not the matchmaking I feel disrespected by. Because, you know, Sean Shelby tried to ch match me up with a top 10 when I fought Jakar. I was supposed to fight someone top 10, didn't work out. And then with Scott, I was supposed to fight someone top 10, it didn't work out. And then finally I got Diego, someone who I had fought before. So, you know, I, um, I didn't put my sentences, I didn't word my, uh, I didn't elaborate properly. My issue is with these guys looking at me at high risk and low reward. These top 10 guys look at me like I'm high risk and low reward and they want nothing to do with me. And that, that's just this a little bit disappointing. You know, I, I appreciate Sean Shelby. He's called me every time, and he's talked to me, and he's explained his situation. So I was a little bit off about that. So let's – I, I, I got to say sorry to Sean. Sorry, Sean. Well, I'm glad you clarified. I was actually going to ask you about that as well. I thought it was pretty interesting that um, outside of just being upset for yourself that you weren't getting matched to the right person, you were also upset that Diego obviously wasn't getting the right people that he should have deserved as well. You know, I think that's why I actually got more emotional. Because I Diego is 36, going to be 37 soon. He put a win streak that lasts five years. I really thought he deserved someone even higher than me. I was 13. I thought he deserved someone in the top seven, maybe top five. So maybe that's why I got so emotional. It's, for myself, I'm, I'm not really the kind of guy who gets too upset about these things. I'm... Uh, in reality, I don't think anyone deserves anything. I, I watched a guy like Max Holloway get 10 wins in a row before he fought for the title, and uh, I'm not going to sit here and act like that. But, you know, five years without losing for Diego, and then to come in here and to have a war with me, I, I, thought, uh, I thought maybe we could do this closer to the belt, if not for the belt. And I know uh, Dana has said in the past, you know, I, I can't make a fighter fight anybody. I can't make True. them choose who they True. are. But I, um, do you think that there is a point when guys are getting either into the top 10 that maybe some of the control of who their opponent is should be taken out of their hands? Like you said that if, if, if well, what I'm, what I'm inferring is that you think a lot of these guys at the top 10 are just choosing to not fight you. Do you think at some point it should be maybe not their call that when some guy's earned and he's on a heck of a streak that you have to fight this guy? You know, I come from a, a totalitarian uh, world uh, country. And uh, I, I like capitalism. I like where you get to have decisions and I get to have decisions. So I, I'm going to go with a no on that one. I think everybody deserves to have a, uh, have a voice in the, in the matter. And uh, if we could break down a little bit about the, I know you said the game plan was defense. But if you could kind of elaborate, what, what was the plan coming in for him? And at what point did it sort of just go out the window? So the game plan was to engage with him with the striking. I felt like I had a better speed timing so I can touch him, make a miss, touch him again. Oh, um, but I would instead touch him and then get touched. <laughs> and then touch him and then get touched and then do the takedown. The goal was touch him, don't get touched, touch him, takedowns. Work the takedowns, drag him down and just kind of suck the life out of him. But it didn't work out and uh, we, we had a war and I had a great time but you know, um, I, I think I could have, you know, been a little bit uh, defensively more aware. Well, I, I, it probably goes to show when one of the first things you said the post was the game plan was kill or die. <laughs> you know, my, every fight I have, that is, that's my mindset. It's not my game plan, but it's my mindset. I'm going to, out, I'm going out there. It's either kill or die. And if you look at all my fights, I've either gone out on my shield or I've gone out there and left my heart on the, uh, you know, uh, left my heart out there and come out with a win. It's always either been a finish or it's been a three-round war. I never, it's not often you'll see me where I'm just, uh, I'm looking to win by points. If you don't mind uh, maybe sharing the, the personal critique of the wife, how did she break down the fight and what did she say that uh, you were doing wrong out there? So they, uh, they accidentally drove us back to our hotel. They didn't realize I was supposed to be coming here. And I, I called her. I was like, oh, okay, I got a little extra time. And the first thing she said, so 
what happened to the game plan? <laughs> and I was like, uh, uh, my love, I got to go do the interview right now. We're at the 10, so I got to go. And she's like, oh, I got a thousand things to say to you. So I, before I, I came in, she finished with, I got a thousand things to say to you. So I'll let you know how that goes. If you really want to know, call me back. Ho hopefully she takes it easy on you. Yeah, hopefully. All right, well, uh, I guess looking forward, um, if you did, were able to have a say, I mean, I know you want to go back and you want to rest and you want to take some time to heal up. What's what's the immediate next after this? And and if you could call your shot, what are the, what are the people on your list? I mean, who are the people that you maybe aren't ducking you or doing whatever, but who are the guys that you think that you should be walking in there next? Mm, I don't know. I don't. Know. I, I I'm I'm over that. You know, um, my my thing is I want to fight late April or May. I'm gonna have a daughter in June. Oh, that's right. Congratulations. So thank you. So uh, I just wanna. I just want to fight before she comes so I can spend time with her. Like, that's, that means the world to me right now. And if I can get a fight in May or uh, late June, that'd be great. If not, we'll figure it out. And, uh, you know, this fight, I actually had a whole th different thought process for the, for the interview and what I was going to say at the end. I'm, so, I'm sorry, I'm going off track. I hope you don't mind. But, um, you know, I... I, I uh, I asked Dana White and, and Mick Maynard to uh, put in uh, my friend Michael Perez, but to be honest with you, this fight, I wanted to actually dedicate this fight to Mike Tyson. You know, I don't see Mike Tyson a, a lot face-to-face. Uh, -face. I'll see him once in a blue moon, but uh, my coach works with him, you know? But he's such, he, he doesn't realize how many people he's, he's inspired. My coach, every day he comes into the gym since he started working with Mike, and he has a new level, like there's a new shine to him, if that makes sense. There's a new, new level of energy um, uh, and that he gets just working from Tyson. And um, I don't know if Mike realizes this, but because of the hardships, he's gone down and he's gone up and he's gone way down and he's gone way up. And because of that, he has this character that... Um, that people want to be around, and they, they get so much out of it. You know, the, the trials he's gone through uh, and overcome, God has blessed them with this, uh, with this aura, you know. So I, I was going to dedicate this fight actually to Mike, but I, I decided to do it for Perez because he's a teammate, and I think he deserves a shot. But uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to take this moment and say, Mike, um, don't know you, but grateful for you. God bless you. Were you a big boxing fan growing up? I watched, you know, I was born in Iran. So, like, when I was coming up, we had video cassettes of uh, Al, uh, Ali, Muhammad Ali. So we watched more Cassius Clay um, and Muhammad Ali. And, like, that was more what we watched because we only had videos. And Tyson, we would, because they were pay-per-views and you couldn't really get them in Iran, it was a little bit tricky. But when I came to America, I watched a lot of Tyson. And... Lately, I've been trying to emulate his game plan, but, you know, body-wise, it's not really my style. But I still love it so much, I try to add it to my game. So uh, I'm, I'm a fan for life. And I know you were very, very busy today. You were very focused. I don't know if you happened to catch the news that Leon Spinks passed away. I did. Well. Uh, I don't know if that was a gentleman that maybe I w that you watched as well. I, um, I, I was in the back, so I didn't really get a chance to hear about it too much. I, I heard he passed away from can uh, cancer, you know. Um, if I could say something to his family, it's just I, I would say I, I pray God gives you guys comfort. Our God of comfort, uh, you know, comforts you in this difficult time. And just uh, Lord bless you. Thank you for that. And last one for me. I'm sorry I don't know this. Is this your first child? Yes. We, I, man, I thought I was done crying for this week. So, like, you know, when they gave me the prize, uh, I turned into a little baby. <sighs> We had a miscarriage last year, so when they put that trophy in front of me for the comeback of the year, that was all I could think of about was my baby from uh, that I never got to meet. Yeah. I never got to meet my baby, never got to give you a name, but I loved her dearly, or him, and I'm going to love you forever. So this is, I guess, my second baby. I'm, I'm so sorry to hear about your, your, your loss. How is this now going into now you're going to, you now have a new focus, a new purpose. How has this helped drive you going forward, knowing that uh, now you have somebody to, to, to provide for? And you could take a moment. I'm sorry. Yeah, of course. I don't know how to explain it to you. After my fight with Scott, one week later, I was 
back into just sprints, not even training, but sprints because I thought I was fighting Charles. And I was a little bit worried about um, breaking down and kind of like running out of juice. And maybe a couple of weeks later, my wife tells me we're pregnant. And you know, first thing came into my mind was a little, I was a little scared. But at the same time, I was so excited. You have to understand when, uh, when the, our miscarriage happened, I had to act tough, you know, in front of my wife because uh, she was really down. So I, I had to just constantly build her up. And then uh, when, when I heard this news second time, I had to do the same thing, build her up. But like as time went on and it became real and all of a sudden we went and the sonograph and the heart heartbeat and she, her, she, she's kicking all the time. And all of a sudden it's so real that um, I never even thought about burning out again. I thought to myself, I can train day and night. And uh, whatever I got to do, I'll do to get back in here and win. All the best, brother. I'm so happy for you. Thank you.